I want you to envision for a moment you're standing on the street corner waiting for the school bus to arrive. Out of your left eye, you notice down the street the familiar yellow block bus coming your direction. But all of a sudden you realize something isn't quite right. And by the time you realize that it's heading for you and all of your friends at the bus stop at a really high and erratic motion of speed, someone behind you grabs you and yells, everyone run to the house real quick. As you instantly turn and run towards the house, as fast as you can, that bus takes out the light pole right in front of you, jumps the curb, lands on its side, starts making a horrible screeching sound as it goes across the street and stops in the neighbor's yard. Is your heart pounding? It should be, because that was close. All of a sudden, one of your friends runs across the street and notices that there are kids trapped in the school bus. So he forces the back door and opens it and holds it open so that the kids can start getting out. Another one of your friends runs over and helps direct them out of the street. Then somebody else says, someone call an ambulance, quick. Now you might not think that there was leadership going on in those moments, but there were. Today, leadership oftentimes comes with a title like principal, baseball coach, or leader of the free world. You know, those are titles that oftentimes are given to people that are put in leadership responsibilities. But most of the time, leadership doesn't happen that way. A designated leader is one is a person that is put in a position of responsibility like your principal or like the President of the United States. Today, we're going to elect in this group a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a sergeant in arms. They will be designated leaders for the next four weeks and they'll actually help run the meetings. You see, designated leaders help us create order. If you didn't have any leaders, it could become chaos. Now, from the story that I shared with you, what type of leaders or leadership was exemplified? Any ideas? Okay, out of that little story, did anybody show leadership there? The person who said get out of the way? Exactly, the person that said get, get up out on the, by the house, right? They recognized that there was a situation of danger and immediately took a step to help get people safe, to safety. What else? The person who opened the back of the bus. Another person that showed leadership because they ran to the bus to help out. What else? Uh, the person who yelled, call an ambulance. Someone that said, call an ambulance. Someone needed to call 911 because there was obviously something wrong. Those are all examples of what I call situational leadership. And that's something that will transpire, that will teach you here, and that you're going to experience over the next eight weeks in different forms, whether it's here or whether it's in some other setting. Hopefully it's not some school bus rollover, because that would be kind of scary. But in every other situation, it's also scary as well. For example, during this, this little session, you might notice your neighbor is struggling with something. And you know how to help. Being a leader, a situational leader, and leaning over and helping them, or becoming a mentor for them, all of that is a sign of leadership. It's a, it's a leadership type. And I can tell you the world needs more of that. But there's one other leadership type that I want us to come away from, from this leadership program. 
And that's what I call a trusted leader. Have you ever had a friend or someone that you admired that is a trusted leader? That you would trust? Yeah. Has that person been a designated leader? Not always, but sometimes. Maybe you're still a little bit confused what a trusted leader is. Maybe I can give you an example. August 4th, 1944, a team of 16 firefighters were airdropped into a gulch up in Montana to fight a forest fire. It had been started by lightning. Their foreman, the designated leader, his name was Dodge. Dodge, as soon as they landed, got his crew in place and ready to work on the fire and to start, work, start fighting it, when all of a sudden, that fire jumped from the south ravine to the north side. And he immediately saw that his team was in a dire situation. The only way to safety he knew was up. But he also knew that the fire could create a firestorm very quickly and outrun them. He got all of his team together and said, we've got to go up, follow me. And he started climbing as fast as he could uphill and his crew started to follow him. He got to a point that he created a fire ring. He lit a fire of about 25 feet in diameter. That started to burn and then he called his team to come join him. Well, think about that. You're following a guy up the hill and all of a sudden you see fire in front of you. That caused panic. Some of, the some of the, his crew just went past him, didn't stop. Three others, they headed for a different part of the ridge. Dodge went to the middle of that firing that he had created. He covered his face and laid flat on the ground. Seconds later, the firestorm blew right over him and didn't even touch him. Unfortunately, 13 others died because they wouldn't listen to Dodge. Dodge was not a trusted leader. They wouldn't trust that he was leading them the right way, even though he was the designated leader for the group. Now that had tragic consequences. What we want you to become are trusted leaders. That's what this youth leadership program is all about. We want you to learn the skills to be an effective leader because experience and skills help you to become a trusted leader. We also want you to gain the experience of communicating because effective leaders must communicate. So the next eight weeks, we'll be helping you learn how to become trusted leaders. Do you want to become trusted leaders? Some maybe, I'm not sure. Well, think of this. If you're in a situation and you don't act, have you failed? Yeah. If you're put in as a leader of a club in your school and you fail, are you a failed leader? Not necessarily. If you are a trusted leader and you fail, do you fail as a trusted leader? It depends on what you do once you fail. And I can tell you that in leadership, we always fail. It depends on what we do when we fail that makes really who we are come out. 
and are we a strong leader? So our goal, Mohan and I, our goal is, uh, as Toastmasters is to help try to give you a safe place where you can learn how to fail safely. Now that means that you collectively, each and individually, need to be willing to try to fail and then be encouraging when others fail. Will you all do that? Will you all be encouraging when we don't do it quite right? Yes. How many will do that? That's great because you need to become a support group for each other because that's how we get better.